arcade things. As you can see here, I've got essentially a little bar top arcade that I went ahead and put together. Um, I had different plans for it originally. I was hoping to take a whole bunch of different plug and plays and wire them in so that they all functioned like an arcade, but things kind of went awry and I blew a couple of those up. So I went ahead and decided to make it into a little emulation machine based off of a Pi Zero because that's what I had laying around. Thanks to the chip shortage, I can't seem to get a Pi 3 or Pi 4 for a reasonable price, so we're working with what we've got. Um, just sort of a top to bottom, we've got the cabinet itself, which is an Ion Arcade cabinet. It was originally designed to sync up via Bluetooth with a um, iPad, but it's a few years old. It's no longer supported. I have a, a fifth or a sixth gen iPad and there were only one or two games that still worked with it, so it wasn't really worth keeping around in its original form. So instead we modified it and turned it into a little bar top arcade cabinet. Um, it's got the eight action buttons up top that work, the joystick that works, and then I also added a start and a select button to operate as the coin and the start mechanism. Um, it does have a little light up coin looking thing over here. Don't know what to call it exactly because it doesn't actually accept any coins, but it's a cool little light that I went ahead and wired in as well just to have it because um, it's there essentially. Um, up here we've got a, I believe it's a 10 inch screen. Um, picked it up off of Amazon. It was something like 60, 70 bucks. It was a little bit pricey for what it is, um, but I do like it because it supports VGA, HDMI, and RCA. Don't know that I'll ever use all of that, but it is cool to have all of that in such a small form factor, because if I did want to use this as my little test screen for um, other consoles or other um, electronics and things, then I can. It's a nice tiny little portable machine. Um, has its own little wall wart, which powers all of this, which is nice. Um, behind the screen here, I have it currently held on with just some Velcro strips is all. Um, I would like to swap this out to be held on via magnets instead because I do feel like that would be a little more secure and easier to take on and off. But you can quickly see behind all this the rat's nest that is the cabling um, to get this all working. It's pretty quick and simple. Like I said, I wired in the um, action buttons, the start select, and the control knob here all to a USB joystick board. Um, they're wired in back here just so they're hardwired and take up less space this way because um, there's limited real estate in this direction. So I went ahead and wired everything going from down here up along into this, into the little USB joystick here. That then has the USB out which goes straight into the Pi Zero. The Pi Zero is powered directly from the, the USB on the screen which is nice. So it has 5 volts out which powers the Pi Zero. The Pi Zero then has the HDMI out that goes back into the screen. Makes it all nice and compact, easy to use, um, easy to set up, relatively um, sweat free, and there's not too much to go wrong. Um, the screen, like I said earlier, then just sort of Velcros back on. I don't love that I have to press on the bezel to get it to stick on. I would like to swap that out with some magnets, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. Here's what it looks like when it boots up. Um, you'll see that RetroPie is starting to boot up as that boots up. Um, you can see the little LED light there for the coin slot. That's not a coin slot. Let you know that it's working. And then we'll speed through this bit, get to the operating system, and we'll pick up from there. All right, so now that we're booted into Emulation Station, um, you can see that I've got a few different systems on here. Um, it is a Pi Zero, so... You sort of know what it does and doesn't run already. These have been around for a few years now and lots of different videos have been put online about what they're capable of. I do have it overclocked just a little bit. I don't remember the specifications of that overclock, um, but I do have it overclocked a little bit just so that it does run some games a little bit smoother. It was struggling a little bit with some Neo Geo games specifically, which is what I really wanted to play on this. As you saw earlier, there is a heat sink on the Pi Zero, so I'm not too worried about it overheating or anything like that. Loading into the arcade games here, I just have a few that I loaded on here um, just to test things out. Everything that I've tested so far seems to work flawlessly. 
Um, like if we were to just fire up some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles here. All right, everything loads up just like you would expect it. It's a little slow to load, again, just because it's a Pi Zero, but the arcade game itself is running really, really well. Um, I do have it set up with the start and select down below here, like I showed you earlier. The thing's really tall, so it's hard to get the whole thing in frame without showing half my house. Um, but as you can see here, if I push the select button, it adds credits. Um, so just like throwing a coin in the coin slot. Sadly, this coin slot doesn't work like an actual coin slot. Otherwise, I'd be using it as such. But you can add as many credits as you want. It's essentially free play, and then you just push start for player one. In this case, pick your character, I guess. And then it plays just like you would expect it to. And then to exit, you just hit start and select like you would on just about any other emulation station setup. Um, and then if we go back, you can load up a Neo Geo real quick. Let's fire up some Blazing Star. So I did go in. Um, I don't know of any arcade games off the top of my head that use all eight buttons. I'm sure there's some fighting game or something out there that uses all eight buttons. Um, originally I had this configured as just the three and three and then start and select, but I didn't really like accidentally bumping into start and select while I'm mashing on buttons playing Street Fighter or something. So I went ahead and moved those down here, which then allowed me f to move um, the main controls up to these, which is great for Neo Geo. Um, not this game specifically, but there are quite a few that use the full A, B, C, and D. I've set that up so that it's mirrored between top and bottom, so you can use whichever is more comfortable for you. Um, just like before, you just hit select to add credits, essentially. Start starts, just like you would expect. And then let's pick our favorite fighter here. And then just like you'd expect, shooting shoots. I would love to set this up with a turbo button of some sort so that I don't have to sit here and mash the controls and wake up half the neighborhood, but I haven't figured out how to set up a, a turbo button or anything like that within, um, I guess that would be RetroArch would probably be the setup, that's where I configured the rest of the controls, so I imagine that's where these controls would be as well. Sorry for bumping is going to get a little bit shaky while I try to fight some bad guys here, I guess. So yeah, that's pretty much it as far as the little arcade goes. Um, it works really well. I really like how everything operates. The user interface is just one that was available in the themes that you can locate um, in any emulation station. Not going to go through how to install that. There's plenty of different videos online. I'm sure if you I'm sure if you searched how to install themes on your emulation station build, you'd see plenty to go off of. But it was a fun little build. I really enjoy having it. My daughter loves playing with it as well. Um, it makes for fun times to enjoy some arcade games that I wouldn't be able to enjoy otherwise in a nice small little form factor. If it wasn't for the chip shortage, this would be a pretty affordable project overall. Um, I think you can find these Ion Arcade cabinets on eBay for 10-15 bucks. I got mine at a secondhand shop here in town for like five bucks. The screen is the most expensive part. Um, you could, you know, get bigger or smaller however you want really. But even including the price of this screen would be, you know, maybe a hundred bucks between the cabinet and the screen. 
the little adapter you can get those on amazon or ebay for five ten bucks and then the pi under normal circumstances would be fifteen dollars um, i was pricing out things that were similar that are pre-built bar top arcade arcade cabinets if i wanted to get one that was able to play neo geo neo geo has one that's out there but it's going for hundreds of dollars as opposed to the 120 130 bucks that i'm sunk in on this so i would say that this is a very good um, bang for your buck as far as what you get out of gameplay and it's small it's portable it's easy to use the screen's nice and crisp i know it looks like there's lots of glare in the camera but in real life there is hardly any um, it works great it's a fun little project i really enjoyed putting it together if you have any questions about how it's made how it's configured um, how everything got wired up or set up go ahead and leave them in the comments down below i'd appreciate the like and the subscribe um, so that I can continue to build the channel and work on more projects like this in the future. But as always, thanks for watching.